so excited. I've been sitting on that news and just bursting to tell people for months and months and months. <laughs> you know, like ever since we got like the senior leadership tick of approval, it's just been like. Yeah, who is chair today? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I guess I could chair. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, give me one second. All right, I'm going to note you as uh, chair for the day. <laughs> One second, I'm on my back book and it's being a little strange today. All right, so let me uh, just share the agenda in one second. Okay. Or just like share the screen here. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give uh, the whole spiel here. So just as a, a reminder, um, so this meeting is, is under the open SSF and is being also, uh, is being recorded, right? I don't see the, uh, yes, it is being, recorded. yes. Okay. So yes, it is being recorded. Um, it'll be uploaded to, uh, YouTube at some point after the meeting. And also that, you know, your, your participation here is, uh, should abide by the open SSF, uh, code of conduct. Um, okay. So let's go through. Uh, the agenda. So usually, first off, we start with um, any uh, introductions. Is this, is, that, is this anybody's first uh, meeting and they want to introduce themselves? Hey, I'm Shane Lawrence. I work at Shopify on a sort of adjacent team to Jacques, and I'm excited to be here. It's my first time joining the call. Hello, uh, I'm Mihai. I have been joining other OpenSSF meetings, but this, this is the first time in the Salsa. From I'm from Google. Hi, I'm Amy from Siri. Uh, this is my first time joining the call. And yeah. So uh, this is Jimmy Ray from AWS, and this is my first time in this meeting as well. Um, this is Sebastian Awad. Um, I'm at Anaconda. Uh, I've previously worked um, uh, on Tough and stuff like that. And this is my first time in the call. Yeah, hi, everyone. This is Shripad. Uh, this is my first time attending this Salsa meeting as well. Uh, anybody else? Otherwise, uh, we can get started with the agenda. All right, cool. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, so let's uh, start off. First person on the agenda is um, uh, Melba. You have some community questions? I do. And I guess it's timely since there's folks that are new on the call, so they probably have similar questions. Um, for blog contributions and acceptance criteria, I know there was a, a thread um, and it, I was looking to see if there was somewhere where these um, the criteria was posted and it didn't seem that way. Um, more than happy to create it. I just don't know where to create it based off of that thread. Um, as well as I think there was a, an action item for this meeting to go over if the community thought it was a good idea to have at the top saying, you know, guest post authored by like a guest or versus an official community post. Um, I think that was also in issue 309. Uh, 
So I don't know if there has to be a vote for that or not, but I, I know there is two thumbs up in that 309 issue. Yeah, I'll, I guess since no one else is jumping in, um, that I, it, I am open to like removing the guest versus other posts and, and possibly removing the banner. Um, I, I don't feel too strongly. Um, I'd be happy to see those contributions. It sounds like people don't have particularly strong opinions. Is that true? Yep. Um, yeah. So then if, so, if, if the, so the, I think the concern is if, you know, there isn't uh, a consensus uh, on the blog, then it is representing the community, right? And those are the community's thoughts, which is, I think, why the guest post came up earlier. So, you know, do we as a community want to have consensus on the blogs? Um, to make sure it is in line with our mantra, so to speak, right? Our thinking versus a guest post might be geared towards an, a, a particular, you know, application of salsa or something like that, right? It's not necessarily the community speaking. Um, so I think that came up earlier before I even jumped in. So, so maybe sorry, okay. go ahead. oh i was just gonna say so so i think i i agree a little bit on there i think that the main thing that i think uh we we've wanted was like just clarity right you know we just want to know like what is this representing you know is this representing the the collective views of the community or is this just one person's um sort of thing about salsa um, and I think both, to be clear, I think both are extraordinarily valuable, um, you know, but just making sure that it's clear, I think is, is really paramount. Yeah, I think also um, like your, your idea of like putting down, like writing down what are the criteria for posting and like, what is the purpose? Um, I think that would remove that, well, certainly that'd be valuable and Maybe if we write that down, we could remove the distinction between guest post and official posts and remove the little banner just with a link to like what the criteria are. For example, if in practice, the blog post means that it's not just a single person's opinion, but it's not, it's like somewhere between a single person's opinion and full community consensus. It's like, at least one or more people reviewed it. No one strongly objected to it. Um, so it's like not that far off. Maybe that would be something we're, that, that we're targeting here. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know there's a blog that's being worked on right now and uh, there's an effort with you know multiple participants from various companies. Um, and so that's what would be representative of a community posting, so to speak. Right. Um, obviously, it would have to go through the official review um, versus, you know, one person submitting something that's more of a guest if if there isn't a, a wide consensus. Um, but where would where would we put this um, for my own knowledge? I know that there's like a governance folder, but I'm not sure where exactly this these rules would go. No. I don't know if anyone has any opinion. <laughs> I, I think any place would be okay in the governance thing would be fine. In the salsa repo would be fine. It's just a file and link to like the file, you know, the, the file display on GitHub. Both okay. those seem okay to me. So I feel like uh, part of the contribution guideline for the salsa project, uh, that, you know, being the website where the post will eventually end up. Yep. As long as it's a um, file that you can refer to with the URL. 
you know, I would, somewhere on the get her on a get her repo, I would think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, one other quick thing, because I think uh, just to to add on, just uh, another couple of cents there. The the, uh, the um, I think it's also valuable to to maybe just highlight like a couple of examples as well of like what sorts of things are guest posts. Because I think the other thing we want to make sure of is that we clarify, for example, if, if somebody comes in with, this is my sales pitch and I want this as a guest post on Salsa versus this is, you know, like make sure that we, we have an idea of like, like, hey, look, these are the sorts of guest posts we're actually looking for. Um, because then we also don't want to just, you know, say, hey, any guest post um, that meets these requirements because then it's just gonna lead to, I think also a lot of folks who just don't know like what sorts of things are folk, what what sorts of things is the salsa community looking for in a guest post? If, if I may, I have at least mine two main kinds of posts. Um, that doesn't mean others can't happen, but uh, I think for the broad community, it's, you know, hey, you know, here's this, here's significant change to salsa, or here is clarification, or you know, just a broad statement. For the individuals, at least I thought what we were, what we were talking about was, hey, we applied, we managed to apply salsa in our project or on our company. Here's how we did it. We're not, and and I, I think you can even just by the tone for that second category, it's not a. This is the one true way. I, in fact, I think we ought to be careful. You know, if there is one true way, that that better be a community statement. Uh, but you know, if it's a, you know, hey, you see this broad requirement. Here's how we did it in our circumstance, and then you don't really need to get a broad. You know, you know, do we all agree that that's how they do it? I mean, okay. I mean, we probably still should double check that it's not just, you know, the 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 cheap sales pitch. But uh, at least that's those were the two kinds of posts I had in mind. Were there others? Yeah, I mean, I think there was a, also a couple of things that, that seemed to be related, which were, um, and maybe this is this will all sort of settle out as we we build more community consensus around some of the things. But I know, like one of the other reasons why we wanted some initial guest blogs was just to kind of show folks, yeah, like, hey, here's how you might do this. This is how we're viewing applying this. Um, and I think it also ties into what. Uh, Mark will be talking about in one of the next agenda items, um, which is just the general like, hey, uh, we want to make sure that we we want to help folks as salsa is building, you know, as we're building out salsa and gearing towards something like a 1.0, that folks understand what salsa is. That there's a lot of like outside of the the actual what's just purely on the website, there's a lot of confusion as to is salsa a specification? Is salsa a set of requirements? Is salsa a set of requirements and a specification? And a lot of these things were leading to a lot of confusion. So we wanted to kind of get some guest blogs out there just to kind of say, hey, like salsa doesn't replace your SBOM. SBOM does not replace your salsa. They're, they're, <laughs> um, and, and help folks sort of understand right. that. And I think that was kind of a, a, one of the, the key things there. Right, although I, I, I would think that that would belong in my first category, clarifications, you know, here's what this is, here's what it isn't. Whereas yeah, that second yeah. one is more the, you know, how we're implementing, how we're applying would be that second category. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, when, I, when I said that too, is like, we wanted to make sure that if somebody is coming with an implementation, that it's also in conjunction with what the community views as a reasonable application of it. It's like, if somebody says, hey, here's how we applied salsa, and we go, you know, the community goes, actually, we don't think that's salsa. Um, I'm, I'm sure we want to kind of call that out. Yeah, good point. Um, any, anything else on this topic? I'm, I'm more than happy to, you know, put together what's in that uh, issue together in one file. And if somebody tells me where to put it, then I'm, I'm more than happy to, to do that. Yeah, I'd say if you could, if you're willing to do that and you can open a pull request against the um, Salsa repository, we can figure out any remaining details there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the other question I had was around uh, our security process around code contributions. Um, I think this is timely because a couple weeks ago I posted this thinking that there would be a meeting during OSSNA. Um, that 
I didn't see any security policy enabled. I didn't see white source scanning or MEND scanning. I didn't see renovate or remediate from MEND as well. Um, I didn't see scorecard enabled or all star. And now I see renovate enabled on some re code repositories. Uh, I think it was like nine days ago, someone um, enabled it and some others don't. So trying to make sure that if there is code that's being contributed by the community as a sub group of OpenSSF, that we do security first. And we have that policy of if you're going to create a new code repo, these are the things that you must do before we start doing commit codes, you know, onboard, renovate, you know, do scorecard, et cetera, et cetera. I think that will help make things consistent across the repos. It'll also give the community the feeling of, hey, they take security seriously as OpenSSF. Because uh, right now, it, it, just looking at it, it, it doesn't appear that security is baked in and there's nothing I can see. I'm not saying it's not, but there's nothing I can see that's saying that it is baked in. Thoughts? Questions? Tough crowd today. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I definitely think that, yes, I, I totally uh, uh, agree with you there. I, and in fact, I think um, in conjunction with maybe the other open SSF um, groups that are out there, like securing repos and whatever, it would be nice to just kind of say, hey, here's like, like, here's what Salsa is. And Salsa is not just applying um, Salsa to itself, but also applying the other best practices in the community to how we manage, because remember Salsa yeah, is mostly for like builds right now and provenance around that, but it would still be, I think, really useful to just sort of highlight that, yes, Salsa is, I don't know, doing two-person code reviews on all code that's coming in outside of, let's say, a demo repo intended to show, you know, this is what non-Salsa looks like or whatever. Correct. Yeah, there. I think there, I saw a couple of commits that there was no reviewer um right and it's okay like you know when you're getting started right but we do want to make sure that security is the central mindset first right we're trying to you know advocate for security as open ssf group um and we need to practice what we preach right um so i'm not sure if there is consensus on, you know, having that process documented, and then we can slowly start making sure that all the repos are, you know, checking off those checkboxes. But, you know, I I won't, you know, use Salsa's code without scanning it myself first because I'm not sure that it's being done right. And so if I get that feeling, I feel others would get that feeling as well if that makes any sense. Yeah, that's that, that's great. Um, would you mind filing an issue? And then I think I think it's really just um, having people do it. Like mm -hmm. I, I personally don't know what all those things are, should okay. be. Um, like I don't really, this is my first foray into the open source world. Like I previously had any open source projects. Me too. So I don't Me know too. what those things are. <laughs> Um, I've just I've just been following the scorecard efforts and you know some of the other uh, uh, open SSF projects. So, but I am new as well into the open source community. Yeah. So don't don't feel bad at there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think like whatever, <clears throat> like like you said, just like the previous issue they brought up. I think documenting what it is, setting up processes so we do the things correctly, and setting up the the salsa framework org, like configure it however it's supposed to be configured, so we can make sure that all the things get done correctly would sounds fantastic to me. That'd be really great. Are there any objections? Again, that's a tough crowd today. Yeah. I, I think it might just be that you're making good points and people aren't disagreeing <laughs> and they're not likely to chime <laughs> in to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. On that, oh, sorry, on that note, I, uh, I'm definitely down to sort of partner on some of that because um, one of the other, so Salsa 
currently, I guess, falls under the supply chain integrity working group. Correct. And and um, one of the other projects that falls under the supply chain integrity group, working group, uh, Fresca, is also like looking at the same problem of like how do we apply um, not just salsa but you know like scorecard and whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, to what Josh said is at least uh, in my work with Fresca. Um, not aware of and like a set of like here's all the open SSF recommendations for good security generally, mm -hmm. um, but we have been sort of doing stuff like working to turn on scorecard, working to mm -hmm. do stuff with uh, what's the security insights group, and doing like it's sort of trying to integrate all of that that we can. I see Mark yeah. has a hand up. Yeah, also one um, one thing that kind of occurs to me is that <clears throat> one thing we've been talking about is eventually expanding, possibly expanding salsa to cover more aspects than just like the, the integrity aspect, the tamp protection from tampering. And so if there's all these other security things that we ought to be doing, um, this would actually be a pretty good, you know, um, case study for like things that perhaps could go in a future level or future yeah. criteria or something like that. So it's probably worth Definitely. like to take notes now of like, uh, what are all the things I, I want to be enabled? Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, um, I know we have a lot on the agenda, so I'm gonna try to <laughs> go through the other stuff. Um, Oops, uh, steering, <laughs> could, yeah, oh, go ahead, David. Did you have a uh, Yeah, comment? I was just to say, I mean, you know, if, if, you, if you can just do them, awesome, if not, create specific issues about you know what to do how to do it mm -hmm. and that way we don't lose track of them yeah i don't have permissions to do any of this stuff you would have to be a repo admin um to Got do it. like the scorecard in the back end all star in the back end but, um, if, you, but if you can say here's an issue do yeah. f follow these steps or link to mm -hmm. those steps mm -hmm. yep yeah the, the more specific, the more likely it is that some poor person who might be me <laughs> can do it. Okay, no fair. Um, okay, uh, for steering committee, I wasn't sure. Um, again, this is a process documentation thing. I, I didn't see the criteria, the nominations, the expectations, right? Um, I like, you know, even the chair, I'm like, I don't know what the chair does. Um, so just trying to get you know, further clarification on that. Um, and then the, the last thing on my list is, you know, there's a good Gmail integration for calendar invites. And so if there is a meeting coming up in 10 minutes, it'll notify the Slack community instead of somebody having to, to write it. Um, so not sure if that's worth our time to, to integrate, because I think it would, it would help bring focus to the meetings that are coming up. Uh, on the topic of steering committee, we are trying to like formal formalize our governance documentation. It was um, it was loose in the initial uh, phase of establishing the project, um, and so you a few people have noticed and mentioned that there's now a CELSA framework slash governance repository, which I'll drop in the Zoom chat, um, where we're trying to document more of the uh, both expectations and kind of processes. Um, I don't know that it answers all of your questions yet, but I think it should. So um, I'm, I, I don't want to respond to every reasonable question with, can you file an issue? <laughs> um, but I think that that doc, that repository should be able to answer the question. So um, that it. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it, and if it's like a meeting with someone that they just tell me the process and then I can write it down, I'm more than happy to contribute that way as well. Right. It's just, I don't know what the process is. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So one of, one of the action items that is filed against that, one of the issues filed against that repository today is to actually name, like we have all of our steering committee members named, but we don't have maintainers named, but those are distinct roles in the governance documentation. So we need to uh, we need to do that. Um, so uh, there are yeah, this is still work in progress, um, but I'd like it to be able to answer the questions you're asking. I'm so happy to work with you on that.
And I'm just, I'm just noticing we're already about a half hour in. It might be worthwhile to talk, start uh, talking about the, the work streams, make sure we have enough time uh, for that. So any other last sort of comments or? Uh, no, just the, the Gmail integration for the calendar cool. invite. If people want to chat on the, the Zoom chat on plus one on the Gmail integration for the the meeting invite announcements, I think that that's about it. Thank you. Automation meeting, meeting notifications in the Slack channel would be great. Uh, Isaac did it today. Thanks, Isaac. But um, we shouldn't rely on humans to do things. Robots can do better. Cool. Uh, next up, it's uh, you, Joshua. Sure. So um, <clears throat> I think we've demonstrated well the fact that we have a lot that we want to achieve as a community. And uh, a one hour bi weekly meeting probably isn't enough to achieve that. Um, so the work streams proposal um, is trying to um, identify collaborat collaborators and find space to collaborate on uh, some of the um, yeah some of those the work that's in the roadmap uh, that we have in the proposals repository and um, collaborating on um, some of the more working items rather than um, discussion topics while still retaining the community meeting as a space to um, have discussions and welcome new participants and for folks to try and understand the community. Um, so the proposal is effectively to create uh, what are currently called work streams that are aligned to the, thought, the four major themes of the roadmap, which is the specification, tooling, adoption, and positioning. Um, and each of those work streams would have like an immediate goal that's also part of the roadmap that they're working towards. Um, and that all feels fairly straightforward. I think the, the slightly trickier bit is um, how to facilitate the collaboration. So my proposals are like we could have work stream uh, communication channels. Um, each work stream should have a lead to help ensure, you know, that things are progressing. Um, and that I think it would be um, like useful to establish <laughs> recurring meetings for the work streams. And, I, and my proposal would be that as the community meeting is bi-weekly, on the opposite week, we could hold uh, work stream focused meetings, of course. The counter argument to that is that if we have four work streams, um, there's, there's a chance that people would want to be involved in all four. So if, the, if there's only one time window to have meetings, uh, people would have to choose where to, um, yeah, which of those work streams to focus our attention on, which may not be desirable. Um, yeah, so the, I think the main thing um, for the purpose of this meeting is to share the idea, get some feedback on uh, the high level suggestions and, and where there are kind of questions like um, recurring meeting and things, We're very open to others' ideas. Um, and uh, figure out how we how we move forward with this. I think, uh, assuming there's no major objections, I, I, the general feedback since we mentioned the idea a couple of weeks ago has been very strong. People asking how to get involved. So uh, I think we um, are onto a good idea. Sorry, I've just completely breezed through what is a two page document. Um, so I should pause and let people ask questions. All right, I'm struggling to find the, the hands up button on ball up sharing screen. Um, so, I, so I think uh, okay, I, this, is, this is really awesome. Um, one question that just sort of comes out and, and I'd be interested to know which, uh, which um, thing you might think it, it, it falls under. Um, it is just, so when I think about some of the stuff here, like I know salsa is in order to, maybe it's positioning, maybe it's adoption, it's not clear to me. Um, but like, for example, a lot of folks are asking like, hey, how do we how do we collaborate with some of the other stuff, right? So maybe like with SSDF, SBOM, but at the, um, like, I guess maybe I'm answering my own question here, probably fall under positioning or whatever, but it's, it's, it's more like also to the other groups, like, hey, CNCF is doing some work, 
maybe getting folks to sort of collaborate with the CNCF. So, hey, like salsa is not ready yet, but maybe let's start working with you to sort of salsify your stuff or it's kind of a little of both, I think. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a good question. I did put something in the document about trying to make sure we're aligned with other open SSF efforts, but I didn't admittedly uh, include non-open SSF efforts. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think it's also worthwhile on that end, just because like, uh, I know, well, specifically, the CNCF is doing some work, and so that work is like, hey, how do we map this to Salsa? So there's definitely stuff we want to do on there. There's also, you know, um, some other projects that are out there that um, uh, would probably, you know, outside of the sort of Linux foundation umbrella that would probably want to also um, at least chat, understand, you know, because there's, I know there's work happening in the IETF, there's work happening all over the place that might be worthwhile in just sort of also seeing, you know, where, um, uh, where there are things in Salsa that we might not want to take on, right? We might want to say, "Hey, look, look at standard X for you know these sorts of things." We think that it's it's the mark. Yeah, um, I suspect part of that will be organic. Um, in that, uh, there's a natural overlap between some of those groups. Um, that's a bit easier to prioritize when you start talking about uh, the actual um, short term work, I think. Uh, but it's definitely something we should bear in mind. So um, I, I guess I'm, I'm I had a question about the, the work streams. I mean, you know, dividing it, divide and conquer to make further progress. I mean, as long as you've got the people to do it, that's awesome. Uh, well-known approach to, to, to solving big problems, it's breaking them apart. I, I do wonder if adoption is kind of overlapping with tooling and partially overlapping with positioning. Is I mean, does uh, you know? I, I'm, yeah. I'm wondering. I, I'm I'm wondering if instead of having adoption as its own, if the goal is improve tool to reduce the risk, that's part of tooling. And to me, positioning and adoption are kind of two sides of the same coin. I, I'm not sure how different they are, except for improving tooling, which I presume will be part of tooling. So I, I'm wondering if we can not do adoption, but move or, or make adoption and positioning kind of the same work stream. That's for um, my initial inclination was that we shouldn't like adoption effectively is trying to uh, encourage open source projects to implement the Salsa requirements. And so my suggestion in italics ah. here is that we should postpone forming this work stream until we actually have some tooling to you know, recommend. Um, <laughs> right. But well, think... in, that, in, in that case, I would suggest just call adoption and post and positioning kind of the same group because you're base, it's basically outreach in all those cases. You know, when you're um, positioning to government and industry, you're still encouraging outreach, right? I think it's related, but not the same. Like, okay. um, the positioning is how we align with other emerging uh, and existing standards and uh, like specification efforts, for want of a better term, whereas adoption is um, like the integration of the tooling. Um, and I, I'm an open source engineer. I'm probably going to go and advocate for Salsa gotcha. to open source communities, but I'm probably not going to get too involved in like US government alignment because I'm not a US citizen and I, you know, I'm times are disadvantaged for those conversations and all the other reasons. So I think there's probably uh, distinct okay. areas of focus and distinct participants in those conversations. Thank you. That makes more sense now. Mark, sorry. Yeah, I think that the in my mind the the big goal of breaking up into work streams, um, uh, I would say even is less about like divide and conquer, but rather different folks are interested in different aspects of the problem. Like there's some people who want to code, right, or like want to build tools, 
and they're not so interested in the abstract standards, not interested in like the theoretical stuff. Like they want to get stuff done right away. Right. Um, other folks are more interested in like the like the specification, how do you form that, et cetera. And so this was an attempt to try to break it up into those aspects. So that way we naturally have similarly minded folks kind of doing those types of problems. But I think like if there's other ideas on how to break it up, that would be more aligned. We could also change it over time too. But if, if there's immediate feedback on like, you know, the, for example, if, if it makes sense, like the same type of folks would be doing the adoption and positioning thing and you want to join them in, as outreach, then that would be a reasonable thing too. Or alternatively, break up one of the things like the, there's like a build service thing versus like a client side thing. Or, I don't know. I, th I think that's the main thing of like tr try to form like focus groups of, of target a small a smallish number of people who all want to kind of work on the same problem at the same time. Got it. And I just want to add on the idea of evaluating um, whether the group should continue to, <clears throat> I suggested in this document that we align that to um, the proposals. Currently, the proposal repository has a roadmap that's, um, I think it's six months out. And I've suggested that we, um, as the roadmap, each time we evaluate the roadmap, we should also evaluate whether the work streams make sense in context of that roadmap. So as a next step, would it be good to, well, I guess if anyone has specific suggestions on the work streams and breaking up, like uh, you could probably just comment on directly on the doc. Um, but maybe a good next step would be to have like a, like a Google form or something like that to sign up. So that way we just collect an initial list of names um, for people who are interested in these different work streams. And then, um, that way, like they could kind of self-organize. Um, would it be valuable for in this meeting to just nominate an initial lead for each one? Just so that way we have a person who's responsible for doing it to actually get the process going. Because I feel like if, if there's no particular lead, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. I think Melba already volunteered to do the uh, positioning. Oh, well, yeah, we're already working on it. So yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to lead that one. Did I get the name right? Yep. Okay. I, I'd be happy to do the specification one unless other folks um, would prefer to lead it. I, I was going to suggest the same, but definitely defer to you, Mark, with a, uh, the expert on that one. Yeah, that, that seems kind of should happen. <laughs> Oops, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Mark, go ahead and add yourself. Uh, so there's that leaves tooling and yeah, I don't think we necessarily need to propose a lead for a adoption given Unless anyone strongly disagrees with my uh, suggestion to pos postpone forming this until we have uh, more concrete things to advocate for. Uh, so that just leaves tooling. I mean, I if uh, I'll take it if nobody else will. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, I don't want. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. I mean, I think it's good to have someone who's working on some tooling. So I know you're doing the sure. software factory stuff. Um, if if you don't have the time or need some help, I'm happy to uh, do it instead. Um, yeah. Yep. And, uh, and given that it's- question on that? Oh, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Anna. Yeah. Two points up there. Uh, if I have, if we have a current uh, open source project that is not related to the OpenSSF, uh, can we migrate it under OpenSSF? Of course, after some inspection from from a group. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yep. There's there, there's a process for that. 
um, right now it's mostly just what the working group just needs to sort of say, yeah, we want to take this on um, and, and uh, adopt it in one of their meetings. Yeah. This is David Wheeler. So, I mean, the, the quick answer is both sides have to agree. <laughs> it's like, like, a, like a date. Uh, but um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what your licenses are. Um, if it's Apache or MIT uh, is the, are the preferred licenses. Um, if, if it's a different yeah. um, open source software license, it's still possible, but then it needs to uh, go up for approval. Yeah, it's, it's one of the two. I think okay. we still on Apache 2 at the time. Okay, that's easy. Okay, so I'll, we'll take it offline in terms of the process itself. And if you would like, uh, maybe on the next uh, call or one of the streams that uh, we can present the tool as well. Sounds awesome. So just to round this one out, I think if each work stream lead can um, start the sign up form and probably a Slack channel or something, that would be a good place to start. Yeah, let's, the leads, let's just talk together, like start an email thread. Um, probably we could just do a single sign up form where people would just check a box um, and just do, do you know, do the consolidate that. But um, the, the three of us could, um, could do that. Uh, it might also be good to have like a, a, a backup or secondary for an assistant or something. Um, uh, like Eric mentioned that for the tooling. Uh, I think it's always yeah. good to have another person to help. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I was just going to say like, I think uh, saying, hey, uh, lead to start. And then like in the first meeting, we say, okay, who's the good backup? Or if somebody needs to step out or whatever, I think that's also cool. Oh yeah, yeah. If, if, if Eric uh, wants to back up there, yeah. Sounds good, yeah. I, I'd like to back up spec, if that's agreeable. Yeah, I think actually most of the, I know in the CNCF, we usually have like a, almost like a co-lead sort of situation because inevitably somebody's gonna be out sick on vacation, whatever. Um, Sounds great. Cool, as, as Jacques mentioned though, uh, time check. I don't know if we wanna, like I think we're at a spot where we could set up an email chain move forward. Uh, I think there's two other topics, right? For... Yeah, the next topic. Um, I think this is probably for the tooling um, work stream, unless we want to break that apart further. Um, but I just wanted to mention that um, the uh, some folks here at Google who are out this week, so they couldn't um, speak, uh, have started on the draft of like a policy model um, for, and, and we're thinking about, as we mentioned in the roadmap, um, like how could we integrate Salsa into to Python? Um, so they've started a draft um, to kind of get, to, to get the process going. Um, and so that would be great as like a, one of the first projects for the, the tooling work stream. Uh, Mike? Yeah, is this one of the things that Brendan Lum was working on, you know? Uh, th th this was um, uh, Vita Venema um, and, and Simon. Uh, oh, okay. Kent were working on it. Yeah, Brendan Lum um, was working on a separate thing, which is the provenance uh, distribution. Yep. Problem. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you have provenance, how do you get it? The policy model was, was more of how do you apply some sort of policy to protect a particular package? Um, the, the main gist of the problem is that we want some guarantee um, that, for example, the requests package in Python, which is one of the most popular packages in PyPI, um, that it's supposed to be built from a particular GitHub repo, but how do you know what that canonical GitHub repo is supposed to be? Um, because if there is some, like for example, if you could record in PyPI uh, and someone wants to upload a malicious version, 
they if the same person has the credentials to upload as they do to change a policy, they could just first change yeah. a policy and then upload. Um, and if you have something different, well, then where is the canonical source read from? Um, and so there's, at least in my mind, there's no obvious best answer for that. Um, it's a challenging problem. And so uh, they've done some initial work to kind of lay out some some thoughts. And so hopefully the, the, the work stream participants can um, come up with, uh, uh, you know, a, a good model and solidify that uh, and then figure out for PyPI how, how we could apply it. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, I have a lot of thoughts on that, but I'm, for the sake of time, I'll let, leave that to the, the other meetings. Uh, but uh, Trishong? Yeah, sorry, quick question. No, this is very exciting. Um, looking forward to joining the work stream. The um, quick question, the, um, um, what, what is the integration of Salsa with Python again? Sorry, maybe I missed something. Yeah, the, the, the notion would be that for, like, for, ideally we'll have, like, in the end goal is we have for, like, all open source packages. But starting with a particular ecosystem like Python, um, the... Uh, how do we have protections to prevent someone who gets the credentials to upload to PyPI from only being able to upload a package that was built from some Salsa compliant build process, whatever that means, uh, and was built from the proper source repository? Um, because like, for example, if you steal a credential, you could just upload anything at all right now. Um, and so how do we do that? Like, do we do some check at upload time? Do we do some monitoring? Do we do a check on the client side? Um, these are all, all options. Um, so it'd be more of defense in depth. It wouldn't be getting rid of the credential. Like you still have to have signing or some sort of cryptography thing. But in addition, you wanna make that credential less powerful. So that way, even in like either an insider who um, is like compromised or malicious uh, or like someone's cred credentials have been stolen, uh, that that power is limited, that they could only do a release from the, from the Git repo. And you're kind of shifting the problem back to the Git repo. Makes sense. Um, okay. to, to Joshua. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting on them. I think it would be, make sense to share with the tooling work stream, like start with like a limited group of reviewers. Um, rather than sharing like with the, the broad community. Cause I think it's like, it still needs uh, uh, more refinement. Sounds good, thanks. Dave? Yeah, <clears throat> I I think that we've talked before, but I don't know if, if uh, you know, maybe it was in a different context. My apologies, uh, maybe I've been you, Mark. Uh, but I know that some folks have been talking about, you know, reproducible builds where you submit it up and then the repo rebuilds to verify that what you sent up was rebuilt. And you know, may, maybe you give a caveat for, okay, everything's the same except the dates. Well, okay, we'll, we'll let you get through with uh, different timestamps. Um, I, I don't think it conflicts with, with what you just said, but uh, um, I mean, that's something, yeah, that's another option. Yeah, I think that's, um, so for the policy model, um, again, without getting too de detailed, but just to make sure like the, the, the broader community is kind of aware of the general problem that's being discussed. Um, I don't think that actually addresses the problem at hand because there's the question of what should the sources be built from? Like if someone uploads and says, build from this random GitHub fork. Oh, right, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta be from the canonical, here is the public source here yeah. is the yeah you know, tag yeah no I, I agree if, I mean if you reproducibly build from random random source code uh, that doesn't help anything <laughs> yeah yeah but so the question is like how do you get that mapping from in this in this particular example the Python package name to right. the usually a Git repo um, and, and it, the idea would be to start with Python as like the first use case but it should be generalizable to any most or all ecosystems. But yes, the, a verified reproducible builds could be a way of satisfying, and, and in my opinion, is a likely um, path for like, how do you actually trust the provenance? Yeah. 
yeah but you're absolutely right it's it's got to be we've got it's got to be captured where it comes from um i think that should be noted in the notes because you're absolutely right that's a critical part of it <laughs> Should we move on to the last topic, Aaron? Cool. So my the last topic put on here, I've been you know thinking about this a bit, uh, and the answer might be open to issue, which is fine. You can do that. <laughs> uh, so for salsa provenance generation, right? I'm trying to think and you know looking at our documentation on the website. Should we create salsa provenance for every step of you know pipeline? Um, even if an artifact is not generated, I think that answer is no, right? But it's not exactly clear within the salsa uh, documentation. Uh, I had a quick chat with Mark on the side before this. Uh, his, you know, his and Mark, you can reiterate, of course. But you know, if an artifact is not generated, then then maybe we don't need to document, um, you know, a, a provenance thing for that step specifically. Uh, that's the question is kind of stemming from. Right, some of the some of the in toto basics, right? Where, you know, some of the intention of just general in toto, right, is documenting every step. I think, right. So that's kind of like where it's coming from from my question. So I'm going to see just to generate a discussion and maybe clarify that. Maybe even put it as a FAQ item on the website if if it's worthy of that. I'm going to turn your question around and ask. Um, <clears throat> Are there some examples of steps you think should not be recorded or would not be recorded under such policy and, and we wouldn't be fussed about it? It's a good question, right? I mean, are there, I guess I'll turn around the question again, right? Are there steps that don't generate a, an artifact, right? Um, so well, for example, yeah, and, and this also depends on the definition of an artifact. Um, I have a taxonomy I proposed a, a little while back of like, there being four things that happen in a supply chain, basically being movement, inspection, assembly, disassembly, uh, and transformation from one kind of thing to a different kind of thing. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, like to me, I believe all four of them are necessary to have, have the full understanding of something. So I'm curious what sort of things you foresee that would fall outside of that taxonomy. Do I need to extend it or do I leave it as is and that's all it needs? You know, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right, right? I mean, you know, every testing step should have an artifact out of it, of course, right? Um, building should have an artifact, et cetera. So I think you're onto something there, especially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this was actually something interesting that, that was discussed previously, because one of the things that we've been doing is, for example, we've been generating salsa provenance for S bombs. So that we know that the S bombs were run using an approved S bomb builder and that sort of thing. Um, there's there's definitely some uh, uh, potential quirks around like how deep does that go, right? You know, you could like, but what about like do do I now need to essentially have approve the S bomb builder at some level to make sure that it's salsa compliant and it, it can lead to some stuff there, which I think is actually going to be useful for both the tooling team and the specification team to help sort of like say, you know, hey, there's going to be certain things that are probably worthwhile in the specification to talk about with um, this is, for example, like a compiled artifact versus this is something that is just a manipulation of some text. So it shouldn't be like a huge change. Like there's lots of stuff that we, we should probably kind of look at there. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you know, it, like you're saying, um, Jacques, every step probably is gonna have an artifact out of it, I suppose, when you think about it that way. Yeah, I think of it as as every every step uh, should leave a trace, I guess. Uh, e even if there's not an artifact per se, um, like inspection, you can say there's an artifact in, in the test results if you sort of squint at it or decide what you mean by artifact. Cool. Yeah, and and quickly, one of the things that people have brought up though is 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 the artifact potentially now going to be an attestation instead of um, instead of let's say a document that then is attested to. There, there was some conversation there. I personally think it's the latter of document plus attestation than necessarily um, just purely an attestation. 
but oh, I uh, realized, David, you have your hand up. I, I was just going to make a quick comment. I mean, the, the purist in me wants everything and record everything and sign everything. But I, we, we do have to kind of count the cost of all this stuff. Um, you know, the, some of these are riskier than others. And so, uh, so much of this depends on how easy the tooling is and, and how challenging it is to do. Um, you know, because as soon as it starts getting, oh, wait a minute, this is starting to cost effort and time, not just, you know, either dollars or time, uh, then we, I think we reasonably have to start backing off to what's the most important part. Unless we can make it so cheap, it doesn't matter. Yeah, when, I think like the higher level point that Aaron brought up um, of like, should this be documented somewhere, I think is a good one. It seems like we have a lot of these type of things of like general guidance that is not requirements, but is advice for how, like recommendations for how to build a useful system. Um, maybe we should have somewhere on the site for that, to put that, that's, you know, like guidance. Um, if anyone has ideas on that, I think they would be welcome. Or like how, how to, you know, guide people. And it, this would be one example. I think we're out of time now. Well, I'll throw an issue up for this if we want to kind of capture that discussion. If you guys nods around, cool. Great. Great. I think we're out of time. Uh, thanks, everyone, Thank you. Uh, for joining. Thanks, everybody. And we'll send out um, an email about the uh, signups for the work streams later. It's also a discussion cool. list and the Salsa channel in Slack for that. Yep. yep. Salsa discussion, awesome. Salsa awesome. Uh, Slack. Thanks, everyone. Right. Bye. Bye, everyone.